Your favorite father stealer is back! <laughs> Y'all already know the drill. I am here to let you know to stream my new EP, Traffic, because it's sickening and it's everything. You need to add it to your library if you want to twerk this summer. Y'all already know, especially if you're a homo, you just need to go ahead and add it to your playlist. Um, and also, patreon.com slash Adrian Expression. Honestly, a couple of the topics today came from the patrons. So yeah, you know, podcast episodes up there. Y'all already know, y'all already know. Sign up, let me know what you think. It's extra content up there for you now. We have a lot to cover this video, but uh, first, real quick, just something fun and light. Lil Nas X, among uh, other celebrities and artists and stuff, was featured in Entertainment Weekly. I just thought the color looked really amazing on him. This was really cute. Also, MJ Rodriguez. I am becoming more and more obsessed with MJ Rodriguez. Uh, as the days go on now, I'm gonna talk about a pose in a separate video because I just, there's so much for me to discuss on that. Um, but yeah, MJ Robbie, and she was also in a Lexus commercial too recently. She just looks fucking amazing. And let me tell you something, there's something about her with like the big ass hair. They did a lot of that in the new episodes of season three with just her with just big hair. I just, I love it. I eat it up every time. <laughs> so just had to mention that real quick, something fun and light, something that was actually pretty heavy was all these names, you know, these movies and these dates that Marvel has come out here and dropped and I, and getting <laughs> my entire life. So the movies that are coming out this year for Marvel are Asian Widow, you already know. Uh, <laughs> we already know Tree Widow is going to be coming out on July 2021. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Not So Mysterious Black Sand, oops, I mean the Legend of the Ten Rings is also gonna be coming out. Uh, this year, September 2021. One of the movies that I am most excited to see, and I feel like y'all already know what I'm talking about, it's coming out October, The Eternals, okay? And recently, Marvel gave us some crumbs, but there were some delicious crumbs, some looks at what this movie is going to be giving. We already know this is a star-studded, like, they got some heavy fucking names on this shit, as you can see here. Um, Miss Angelina is just gonna be, of course, she, of course, they're going to make sure that y'all see um, them sharp, that sharp ass jaw bitch. Let you know hope that they got budget, okay? Because Angelina Jolie's here, here, okay? <laughs> no, but honestly, I am not, uh, you know, excited because the uh, because of the actors. I am excited because of how powerful and sickening the Eternals are. Like, I mean, let's just read it here. All Eternals, basically, they're fueled by cosmic energy. Um, they have access to a multiple abilities that are possessed by every Eternal. All Eternals are capable of super strength, teleportation, telepathy, telekinesis, matter manipulation, flight through levitation, creating illusions, all this shit, bitch. But of course, each Eternal has specific things that they're like really good at. I mean, they have a whole history of like the Celestials who are more powerful, I guess, than them, uh, who created them. And the Celestials are just like, apparently they're not supposed to be good or evil, but they be creating genetic experiments on planets and shit, and if it fucks up, they're just like, girl, we finna wipe this entire planet off. So it's like, it's crazy. I just cannot wait to see what they're gonna be giving us. Ooh. And remember, I think we got a look at one of the Celestials, right? Uh, during Guardians of the Galaxy 2, I think? One of them hoes. When he, remember when he took that Moses staff and stabbed that shit on the planet and that shit just wiped out? I think it was Guardians of the Galaxy 2 when was his face was talking to Star Lord's annoying ass was talking to Ego. You know, I know that they're gonna deliver it to us. Spider Man is also coming out. Wanda and the Multiverse of Madness. Y'all are gonna have to stay mad about it. <laughs> Y'all gonna have to stay mad about it. Yeah, it might be Doctor Strange movie, but bitch, guess who we guess who we're going there to see? Guess who we're going there to see? We're going to see Wanda. Wanda Vision. Wanda Vision. Bitch, you hoes need help with your vision if you cannot see. All right, then we are gonna be focusing on Miss Wanda. Okay, Doctor Strange does have cool powers. He's really one of the coolest characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm not gonna front, but as soon as Wanda gets on the stage, it's almost like when Beyonce hit the stage. Just sit your ass down. Sit your ass down. Uh, I need to make sure that Miss Mama's fine her kids. That's it. I, that's why I need to make sure that she's okay. Strange, you'll be all right. Uh, and if not, hopefully there's no clashing between Doctor Strange and Wanda because I'm gonna have to be biased and pick and pick the queen. 
I'm sorry about it. <laughs> now, they officially gave Black Panther a title and it's called Wakanda Forever. We already know that they said they're not going to be recasting uh, the Black Panther. They're not going to be recasting uh, Chadwick Boseman's role. But I'm really interested in seeing, of course, obviously there's been a lot of... Uh, Report saying that it's gonna be fucking Shuri or rumors saying that it's gonna be Shuri So like I just want to see what kind of story they're gonna be crafting when it comes to that now They also instead of it being like Captain Marvel 2. This is from my understanding uh, It's gonna be the Marvels that's gonna come out in November 2022 and it's gonna of course feature Monica Rambeau because like she's technically one of the Marvels even though they call her photon too, you know Carol Danvers of course and Kamala Khan, she's gonna be played by Iman Bellani, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, as like a Miss Marvel kind of character. This is what I, from what I understand, like a Miss Marvel kind of teenage character. So I just, that's another movie I'm just like, okay, okay. Maybe they felt like since the reception of the Captain, of Captain Marvel before, they were just like, mm. <laughs> let's add some more characters onto this shit. Even though like the movie was good for our origin movie, you know, it was like, it was definitely like C plus B minus material, <laughs> but it was still fun. It was cute. I thought it was fun. Honestly, I remember Dragon for that movie just because I felt like a lot of the fanboys were doing way too much. Like when it come when it came to the actress who played uh, Captain Marvel, like I realized, like I feel like they were doing way too much. A lot of that shit was steeped in misogyny, in my opinion. So I was dragging it. But then they also they put up this Fantastic Four thing, and I'm just like, all right. All right, I feel like they're, go hopefully they take their time with that because I feel like it's gonna be a lot to live up to, especially, first of all, there's a lot of nostalgia going on with Fantastic Four kind of movies, especially those of us who are in like my age range and we grew up with the Chris Evans, like Jessica Alba ass, like that shit is just iconic to me, no matter how cheesy it is, that's iconic. But like the newer move, the newer Fantastic Four movie, but that shit is giving me like new Green Lantern movies, it's like nobody wanna talk about that shit, I understand it completely so i i hope they take their time with this i hope they get it right i think they will loki is going to be coming out as well but they said it's going to be coming out on uh wednesdays instead of fridays like how we're used to so i'm i'm just like hurry the fuck up let's just quickly switch gears here house of the dragon they keep releasing these pictures uh, this first one is of allison hightower and otto hightower now otto hightower is the hand of the king during this time king viserys uh, and he's real messy. That's all I'm gonna say. Like, he's really messy. I'm not gonna talk too much about the plot, but it's the beginning of the goddamn Dance of the Dragon, so you you can already tell it's gonna be a lot of mess in the courts, right? So, the, you know, they had the king and his daughters, the, like, they're real messy. Now, the sea snake, listen, the fanboys are pressed that his ass is a whole Negor. Like, they do not know what to do. They, <laughs> But it's a fantasy world, y'all will be okay. He's the Negro and he's gonna do great. The actor is gonna do great and y'all are gonna be pressed about it. And you're still gonna tune in, you're still gonna watch it. And of course we have Princess Rhaenyra and uh, Prince Daemon Targaryen. Daemon is the brother of the king and I think Rhaenyra is the king's daughter. And of course, a lot of the conflict has to do with who's gonna take the throne. Is it going to be who the king wanted or is it gonna be messed up by the hand of the king? All right, now I have to talk about this clip real quick because Andre, who's also on my Patreon, he really wanted me to discuss it. I was like, okay, let me see. I had not, I did not even know that this shit was going on. Apparently, <laughs> so we already know who Tucker Carlson is. He's a conservative buffoon that it's just, he does dumb I mean, he's been embarrassed so many times. I think one of the most iconic times, which also uh, Joy Reid brought up was uh, the fact that he was embarrassed by Jon Stewart a long time ago, but it was just, it's just, such a, a huge part of <laughs> that shit is so unforgettable. All right, conservative buffoon, and you know, Joy obviously she's gonna talk about a whole lot of things, especially as a black woman in media. She's going to raise her voice about certain things. So Tucker Carlson, I guess, catches himself calling her the race lady multiple times. He always refers to her as the race lady. And he tries to act like, oh, you know, you are exaggerating these issues. You're acting like you're so oppressed when you went to Harvard. Just like really shitting on her for no reason. And I don't understand like why certain people think that you know, I'm, you know, as a black person in this country, you just, you're not gonna talk about race, you're not gonna address that shit. But it's just, it, her comeback was, it, it was just so amazing, it was so hilarious. Cause first she was, she essentially talked about the fact that it's not us who are obsessed with race, it's y'all. 
it's y'all. And it, one of the things that really gets me is when every time she referred to him, she got, she called Tucker Carlson Tuckums. <laughs> she called him Tuckums, Tuckums. And uh, the, one of the best parts though was when she was like, oh, are you really pressed that I went to Harvard? Did you wanna go? Did, did you want, I got in because my GPA was high. I didn't have to rely on my girlfriend's daddy at the time or something like that. She was just, she just went off on his ass. Every time she called out his hypocritical bullshit, it just gave me so much life. One of the other gems was when she brought up the fact that Tucker Carlson was always, you know, making fun of her or ridiculing her for continuing to wear her mask post vaccine while she's around a bunch of people. And she was just like, you know, you want to know why I wear my mask around a bunch of people? Because some of these people may be tuning in to people like you, may be tuning in to your show where you're spreading misinformation, you're spreading lies about COVID. And, you know, so they do not make efforts to protect themselves from that shit. And so everyone around them is affected by that. And so she's just, it, 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 she just hit every single point and it revitalized my whole soul and spirit. And I just want to tell her, thank you so much. Uh, don't pay too don't pay too much attention to that man because like we all know they thrive off of ratings they thrive off of clicks and so all the attention you know means money to them but uh, I was just happy that she stuck a fork in that pig and to finish this video off we have this conversation among all these politicians and they're talking about uh, for the millionth time race and American for the millionth time they're getting it fucking wrong, right? So I think this is how it started. So Joe Biden was up there giving a speech to Congress, right? And Tim Scott, a the only Repu black Republican senator, <laughs> the only black Republican senator, I think he comes from South Carolina, uh, he responded to one part of Joe Biden's speech where he said passing major police reform could help stamp out institutional racism nationwide. That's what Joe Biden said. And uh, I mean, you could analyze that statement in and of itself because these police reform bills that uh, these bitches like to pass the majority of the time, they end up giving more and more and more money to the police. And it's just interesting that they think that, oh, the police are gonna police themselves with them. It's just really some bullshit. When you take a deeper look at what they call reform, it's, it's most of the time it's 100% bullshit. But that aside, but Tim Scott, this tap dancing, Tap dancing ass raccoon. He responded to that by saying that, oh, you know, you know, America is not a racist country. And his black ass, America is not a racist country. Uh, and then he, he really compared black people experiencing racism for generations to white people being called out for their bullshit. Or even complicit people being called out for their bullshit and uh, enabling these systems that fuck everybody over. So it's just like, now you look at the, you look at people and they say they're part of the problem just because of the color of their skin. And almost like he was implying that y'all are being racist towards whites, which is so crazy to me. I don't, I, you have to really be so committed to being ignorant to be saying some shit like that. Especially when you look at all these systems and what they're doing to people around us from healthcare to education to government, right? So yeah, I think he was trying to imply that Joe Biden was saying that uh, America is a racist country and it's crazy as hell because you, we already know that, you know, Republican light, <laughs> the Democrats would never get up there on, on national TV or whatever the fuck and say no shit like that. So, I mean, Joe Biden went on NBC and he said, I don't think America is racist, but I think the overhang from all of the Jim Crow and before that slavery, you know, all that has a cost. He said, after 400 years, African-Americans have been left in a position where they're so far behind the eight ball in terms of education, health, in terms of opportunity. Kamala Harris went on to the, you know, interview with uh, Good Morning America. She said, no, America is not a racist country, but we have to also speak truth about the history of racism in our country and ex and its existence today. I just think that it's so annoying to hear a lot of these politicians, especially one, especially one that's known for Mr. Crime Bill and the other one who was priding herself off of being uh, a part of the apparatus that oppresses so much of our community. It's crazy to hear them talk about 
oh, America is not a racist country. And then they go in there and create fucking legislation that is written from that fucking perspective. So not only is there a lot of, a lot of times has their legislation fucked over so many communities, the same ones that are sitting over here uh, protesting and y'all are wondering why, but y'all have this idea that we're so far removed from racism or they're just a few bad apples. And then y'all have, like I said, y'all getting that mentality, creating legislation. And then a lot of times you won't bother to give a fuck if it's actually um, negatively affecting the same communities that are talking about racism. You won't bother to give a fuck until it's time to run for some shit until it's time to you know uh, again until it's time to pander to them bitches and then you know you get fed these fucking talking points and that's it and that's it so and like i said that's why i couldn't be a politician because i'm sure that it would look bad i guess if a president went up there or a vice president went up there and said that oh i guess on the world stage oh that america is a racist country even though like everybody Everybody knows that it is. Everybody knows that it is. So I just think that it's fucking corny that it's, that we have these bullshit PR, damage control kind of conversations instead of real ones where y'all actually address the issues and not beat around the bush. Yes, the whole, the entirety of this fucking country, especially we talking about systems that have existed for generations like policing, yes, it, it is racist. And we have to say that so that we can fucking work on this shit instead of like, oh yeah, girl, it's in the past. Black people are so far behind the eight ball. They're so far in the past. Yeah, because a, a lot of time you and people like you around were key parts of the racist system that fucked them over. <laughs> and, and that still exists today. What are y'all talking about? Like these politicians literally took the hammer to the glass and smashed that shit. And it, it continue to do so too. And then when you ask them, oh, is that glass, is this glass broken? Would you say that it's broken? And they went, oh no, it's not broken. It's a little chipped. It had, it, it went through a little bit of an issue before. Ma'am, this shit is broken. It needs to be fixed, okay? On that note, thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you check out patreon.com slash Adrian Expression. Stay safe and sexy and make sure that you have a good goddamn evening. Play a trip. Play a trip.